here is an amazing question to test your knowledge of Excel features. Jeremy is building a tank for a treatment plan. When he calculated initial volume, it showed as 40,000 cubic meters. He needs to make sure the tank's volume is 50,000 cubic meters. And Jeremy can only adjust the height of the tank to meet the specifications. Which Excel feature should Jeremy use? And you're presented with the list of four choices. Choice A, Consolidate. Choice B, Flash Fill. Choice C, Goal Seek. And then choice D, none of the above. Take a close look at the snapshot provided with this question. You're presented with measurements of length, width, and height. And there's also information that volume is calculated as length multiplied by width multiplied by height. And then volume in the cell D3 is calculated as product of range B2 through B4. Do you know the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. And in my end, I would like to move forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Here is the scenario simulated in Microsoft Excel. I believe that the best way to solve this challenge is to use Goal Seek feature of Microsoft Excel. Goal Seek feature in Excel is a part of What If Analysis tool and is used to find the desired result of a formula by changing the input value. Goal Seek can be accessed on the Data tab in the Forecast section in Excel ribbon under the What If Analysis button. After you access Goal Seek feature, you are presented with the dialog box. In the set cell, we have a value of the cell D3, which is the volume calculation. We need to change the volume. Our target volume is 50,000 cubic meters. So let's put this value into the two value section of the goal seek. And we need to get to the 50,000 cubic meters by changing the cell B4, which is the height. When we click OK, we are presented with the goal seek status dialog box. And here we just click OK. And you see that the volume was recalculated and the target height is 50. So the correct answer to the original question is choice C, goal seek. Do you know any other Excel features that can help Jeremy in his goal? Please make sure to share in comments. Here's an amazing question to test your knowledge of Microsoft Excel features. Purchase orders, POs, were mistakenly created with 2021 financial year ID. Which Excel feature allows you to change all purchase order starting numbers from 2021 to 2022? And you have four different choices. Choice A, Consolidate. Choice B, Flash Fill. Choice C, Goal Sick. And last but not least, Choice D, Find and Replace. Take a close look at the purchase order numbers in Microsoft Excel and see which feature would you choose to complete the action. Did you figure it out? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. I believe the correct answer here is choice D, Find and Replace, because Find and Replace feature in Microsoft Excel allows users to quickly search for and replace specific text or values in the worksheet. Let's jump to Microsoft Excel so I can show you an example. Here in Excel, I try to emulate the scenario from the question. In column A, you see purchase order numbers. To replace 2021 as a leading year, you need to navigate on the Home tab into the Find and Select area and click Replace. You're presented with Find and Replace box. And here we need to type in 2021 in Find What and replace it with 2022. I am going to demonstrate you two ways of doing the replace. Let's find the first value first. We click Find Next and Microsoft Excel pointed us to the row 2. Here we can click Replace and it will replace the value in the row 2 from 2021 to 2022. We can also use the feature called Replace All, which will complete remaining 9 replacements. So I believe the correct answer here is Choice D, Find and Replace. Do you have a better solution? Please make sure to post your answer in comments. Here is the very interesting Excel test question where you need to calculate the first day of the next month. One of the manufacturing plants in Houston is using Microsoft Excel to schedule their work. Which formula should scheduler use to calculate the first day of next month? You are presented with today's date, 
which is February 10th of 2023. And you have four different choices for the formula. Choice A, A month, with the parameters A2, comma 0, plus 1. Choice B, using date formula. Choice C, using date formula, but with different arguments. And then last but not least, choice D, E months, with the argument A2. Do you know the answer? Take a close look, as the answer to this question may not be obvious. Ready or not, I am moving forward on my end to simulate this scenario in Microsoft Excel to show you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Here in Excel, we have current date, February 10th of 2023 in the cell A2. And I believe the correct formula here is E month with the following arguments. Let's first understand the end of month's formula because I believe that it leads us to the correct solution. And if you see closely, end of month returns a serial number of the last day of the month before or after special number of months. The first argument is the start date. And then the second argument is the number of month. If we pick the start date as today's date and then say zero as the end of the day of the current month, it will return us the last day in February which would be February 28th of 2023. To get to the 1st of March, we need to add plus 1 to the result of this formula. So I believe the correct answer here is choice A, end of month, argument A2, 0 as the month, plus 1. What's interesting, end of month formula can also accept negative arguments. For example, if for a month we will put minus 1, it will get us to the previous month, which was January. And by adding plus 1, we got to the first of the current month. But if we remove plus 1, we get to the January 31st of 2023. And if we use positive arguments, for example, plus 1, or we don't need to specify the plus, just 1, it will get us to the last day of the next month, which would be March 31st of 2023. Do you have any other uses of end of month formula besides scheduling? Please make sure to share in comments. Here's an amazing question to test your knowledge of Microsoft Excel features. You're presented with the set of data which shows industry and number of people employed. Data table shows Texas employment in five key industries. And you need to determine the correct Excel feature used to display the percentage employed column. You have four different choices. Choices A, pie chart. Choice B, stacked bar chart. Choice C, Advanced Conditional Formatting, and Choice D, Bar Chart. Do you know the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. You typically get no more than 5 to 10 seconds to answer these types of questions on a test. On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. I believe that the correct answer here is choice C, advanced conditional formatting. And it is advanced because it is conditional formatting with data bars. Conditional formatting with data bars is a feature in Microsoft Excel that allows users to quickly visualize the relative size of values in the range of cells. It uses color code bars to represent the relative size of each value in the range, making it easier to compare values at a glance. Data bars can be used to highlight the values that are above or below a certain threshold, or to compare values across different categories. Now, let me share with you step-by-step -step instructions on how you can solve this challenge on the test. The first step is to analyze the data. What we see here is that we have data broken down by the industry. We have information technology, business services, education and health, leisure and hospitality, as well as manufacturing, and number of employed people in each industry. So to calculate percentage of employed people using advanced conditional formatting with data bars, we need to create new column and format the title. So the title matches other titles in this data table. In the next step, we need to calculate the values to represent percentage of employed people. We need to calculate total using the sum formula in Excel. 
In the next step, we need to format the values as a percentage using percentage data type. Then we select newly calculated values and on Home tab, click Conditional Formatting. We point to the data bars and then click to either Solid Field or Gradient Field. In our case, it is a solid fill. Do you have a better way to solve it? Please make sure to share your step-by-step -step instructions in comments. Here's an interesting Microsoft Excel test question, which tests your knowledge of Excel formulas. You need to show how to add current date and time in Microsoft Excel using formula and then format it as long date. Do you know how to do it? Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the formula. And I am going to move forward and show you the solution. In fact, the solution is very simple. All you need to do is type in the now function. Now function returns the date and time in the standard format. To format it as long date, you need to navigate to the Home Ribbon tab and in the Number Format section, select the long date. Did you figure it out on your own? Hope you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. I would like to ask you to participate in our daily assessment test challenge. I post new questions every day in the Community tab of YouTube channel and give you an opportunity to answer it and try it. And I post answer in comments next day. So please make sure to check it out to test your knowledge. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test. A lot of times you might get a question on how to sort data in Excel from smallest to largest. For example, you might be presented with the data set which shows student names and their grades on different subjects. Here on the screen we see the grades in physics math, chemistry, and biology. And we need to sort this data set based on the student names. To accomplish this task, we need to select the data set and in the Home tab, navigate to Sort and Filter and select Sort A to Z. This will rearrange the data in the alphabetical order based on the student name. An alternative solution might be to use Custom Sort. To use custom sort, you need to select the data, navigate to the Home tab, and then select Sort and Filter, and then Custom Sort. Here you are presented with the screen where you need to select the column by which you are going to be sorting, and then select the order. In my case, I am going to select the column as Math Grade, and then in the order, I am going to select Smallest to Largest. Once I clicked OK, you see that the data set was rearranged from smallest to largest based on the values in the math column. Let's recap. To sort the data in Excel, you need to either use sort smallest to largest or custom sort functions. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for all your endorsement, support and patronage. For additional helpful information, please make sure to check out links in the description. For detailed list of available resources, I encourage you to check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you know someone who would benefit from this content, please consider sharing the link. Please leave the feedback, corrections, or suggestions in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.